Hey, what's up? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to charge premium prices for your services as a freelancer, as a developer. So, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Pricing your services is a very loaded question. So, I like to go at it, I'm gonna tackle it from a little different angle, which if you've been following me for a while, you're gonna be like, hey, I already know this, but this is gonna be a reminder to you. If you're new to this channel, hopefully this is gonna provide you with a different perspective. Now, as a developer, you know, I'm a programmer, I'm a developer, I love the bells and whistles that I can provide with my, with my software features that I build into a product. So if I'm trying to build something for a client, it makes me really happy. Or when I was just getting started and I could do, I'm like, hey, I'll take on a client for their website, I would be like, hey, I can use Python and Django here. You know, what I realize is, and I'll, and I'll start this off with a story so you can actually get, a, get the point. In order to be able to charge premium pricing, the, one of the most important things you need to be able to understand and do is you need to understand that you're solving a problem. You are less focused on your coding and your bells and whistles. You're more focused on solving a problem. So here's the story. I was one of the students from our course, Profitable Programmer, he joined this course and he landed a client who uh, he was trying to build websites for him. This student reaches out to me and you know, a few days later and he said, I've been putting in a lot of work and I'm you know, building this, uh, this girl's website with Python and I'm using Django and I'm really going all in. So he's like, what's your best advice for me? You know, he's like, I've already spent like 15 or 20 hours. And I asked him, I said, um, why are you trying to code it with Python and Django? And he said, well, you know, that's what the course taught me. It taught me Python and Django. And then it said like, go and freelance. And I said, well, what does she need? And he said, well, she needs like contact page and she needs an about me page and she needs a home page. And so I said, I asked him, I said, what do you need Python and Django for? And he said, you know, I was just building the website with it. So I said, why? I'm like, just use Squarespace. Just use WordPress. Why aren't you using Squarespace for WordPress? And then he got into argument with me and he's like, well, this course was about teaching me Python and Django and freelancing with it and now you're telling me that I should have just used Squarespace. And I said, yeah, because nobody gives a fuck about my course. Nobody gives a fuck about your skill set. People care about their end result. So why wouldn't you just use a tool that's designed for the problem that she has? It has a very simple solution. Use a platform like Squarespace or WordPress, build her a website. It would have taken you an hour or two hours or three hours instead of going and spending 40 hours, 30 hours or 40 hours trying to custom build something on your own. And you would have gotten paid and that would have been it. I hope that this story kind of shows you that you have to focus on the actual problem that you're dealing with. Sometimes it might not even rely on a specific programming language. For example, I was speaking with Brennan Dunn today. I'm at Craft and Commerce Marketing Conference and Brennan Dunn is the founder of DoubleYourFreelancing.com and he helps freelancers be able to charge um, premium prices. And I was talking to him and he said, people need to spend more time actually learning the business side of things and, I, and keep their eyes open to more local businesses and then go there and then if they see there's a flaw in somebody's process, they're doing too many things manually and they're like handing off sheets to each other or you're doing something with Excel and it's actually like a lot of work and then there's a manual process and it's, there's a workflow and you can come in and you can update it and you can use tools that already exist like Google Sheets, you can use Zapier that already exists, you can use then like something is automatically emailed when this is done. If you don't have to build a custom thing, just start off by coding with things and leveraging things that already exist. Too many developers are all about, I have to build something from scratch and they get this like high off of building something from scratch. It's really good. Good job, little buddy, for your little ego. But nobody cares. People care about the end result. As a business owner who's gonna be 
giving you the money to help them, you know, if you're freelancing or if you're working for a company or whatever the case may be, you have to understand that the person who's investing $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $40,000, $60,000 dollars in you, they have to get their return on investment somehow. There has to be an actual ROI on you. So you have to be thinking in terms of what is the value that I'm bringing and how can somebody investing in me, how can I solve their problem that can actually give them a higher return? So for example, if you're building somebody's website, you are not just improving their graphics or giving them nicer graphics, you're effectively helping them get a lead. A lead is somebody who comes in and gives them the email or call. And if they are telling you that out of every 100 people, one person buys their $3,000 thing, well effectively, that's like uh, each person is worth $30 to them, okay? So each new lead that you're getting for them is worth $30. So if you build a nicer website and you design it to get them more leads, and they go from getting 100 leads to maybe 1,000 leads a month, you have effectively 10 x their business which means they're now going to get 10 times the revenue, meaning that they were getting 100 leads now and, make, and each lead was $30, right? And out of 100 leads, they would make $3,000. Well, out of 1,000 leads, they're going to make three times 10 because you have 10X, they're gonna make $30,000 a month, right? So you're effectively really helping them increase something. Now, the growth that you might add with your little website design is not realistically gonna be not that insane, but like you might take it from them getting 100 leads to 150 leads or 200 leads. And in, even in that case, you're effectively adding an additional $3,000 a month to their revenue. And over the course of 12 months a year, you're adding roughly $36,000 to their revenue and that's just in year one and then they get to reap the benefits of it in year two and year three right now if you are sharing this with the business owner and you're telling them exactly what you're going to be able to do and how you're going to be able to provide them with a design like that that would help them get more leads and you can tell them my goal is not to get you better design, it's to help you get more leads and more revenue for your business. Now, you're not speaking like this little nerdy developer, you're speaking more like somebody who that business owner can understand. And you're not a commodity anymore, so they're not thinking, oh, I'm just gonna outsource this to somebody in, you know, uh, Bangladesh or Sri Lanka who's charging five bucks an hour because now they're not just, they're not comparing you on your skill sets, they're actually comparing you on who's bringing more value. The other developer is not talking about any value, doesn't have any fucking idea. So now you stand out as a very clear choice of the right type of person to work with. And now what you can do is you can charge a much higher price too. You can charge 10 grand for that same website somebody else might do for $300, okay? but it's tied to a result and you're helping your client actually get that result too. So this rabbit hole goes really deep, but my advice to you would be really start paying attention to business. If you wanna start improving your income, understand business, understand like build more skills in your life regarding business. Understand like why somebody, will pay a developer. Like, do most developers even know that? I don't think so. They're just like, oh, I'm gonna work for this company, I'm gonna make epic games, or I'm gonna work for this company, we're gonna build a cool software. But what's the return on investment for each of the software developers? How much is the company profiting per software developer that they have? What are they profiting for? Why are people hiring a freelancer to build them an app? Like, for example, somebody who has no prototype and is building an app, they don't have a business model around it, of course they're gonna pay you 100 bucks or 200 bucks and that's about it. But then you go to somebody who's already making money from it and maybe they're making 5,000 or $10,000 a month, but with your help now, you can help them make 13,000 or $15,000 a month. You're moving the needle for them, right? And so then you can charge a much more premium price. So understand more of the business side of things. I love Brendan Dunn's advice, like go to local business meetups, like you can go to meetup.com and find them. 
but really get in there with how you think understand you are a business my friend John Thomas book called soft skills is really really incredible on this as well but that's what I'm gonna leave you with I hope this was helpful if this was helpful uh, drop it in the comments below please subscribe to the channel but drop something in the comments below that's usually you know I like going in there and, and jumping in there from time to time drop something in the comments like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but with that said that's it thank you so much for watching this is Kazi I love your face holy shit I need a coffee and as always I'll see you in the next video oh, no.